Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. Peace and Pan-Africanism, peace and Pan-Africanism. Yo, Dallas, Texas, King Kong is in the building. Dallas, Texas, King Kong is in the building. Dallas, Texas, King Kong is in the building. Yo, Tyrese, genuine. I need some tickets to the show tomorrow night, Cannon. I just heard that Belle Biv DeVoe and TTG are going to be at the American Airlines Arena here in Dallas, Texas. BBD and TTG. BBD and TTG. Tyrese Tank and Genuine. Bell Biv DeVoe tomorrow at the American Airlines Arena in Dallas. Tyrese, I need some tickets, bro. Tyrese, hit up your brother. I need some tickets. Front row, King Kong Consciousness is pulling up tomorrow in Dallas, Texas at the American Airlines Arena for the Bell Biv DeVoe, Tyrese Tank and Genuine concert. And Silk, shout out to Silk. Silk going to be there. I need some tickets. I need... Tyrese, genuine, get at me. I know my number. I need some tickets, fam. Two tickets. I'm going to pull up with one of the queens. Two tickets. I'm going to pull up with one of the queens. Two tickets. I'm going to pull up with one of my Texas queens. I need two tickets. I need two tickets. Anybody got an extra ticket for BBD and TTG? Hit the prince up. Hit the prince up. Hit the pr any queens free tomorrow? Any of my Texas queens? Any of my Dallas Fort Worth queens free to accompany me tomorrow night? Are any of my Dallas Fort Worth queens free to accompany the Prince of Pan Africanism to the BBD TTG concert tomorrow in Dallas? Oh, yes. I'm pulling up. I'm pulling up and I'm going to take the mic. After they do their concert, we're going to have a lecture. After they do their concert, I'm going to take the mic and we're going to have a King Kong power lecture at the American. Air. Who dares me to get up there and take the mic? Who did? Once they done, because I want to see my brothers perform. Once they done, I'm grabbing the mic. And I'm going to turn the joint out. On some Garvey shit. Y'all feel me? I'm going to turn the whole American Airlines arena out on some pro-black Queens Forever Snow Bunnies Never shit. Do y'all feel where I'm coming from? Dallas, Texas. Do y'all feel where I'm coming from? Don't dare me, family. I'll take that mic and turn it out. I'll take that mic and turn it out after my brothers perform. What else is going on in Dallas tomorrow? What else is going on in Dallas Fort Worth tomorrow? What else is going on on da in Dallas Fort Worth Friday night? <sighs> I heard they not going to let Puff out until the trial begins. I heard Puff can't get out of jail until the trial begins in the spring, family. I'm only high on the ancestors, my beautiful African sister. Wait a minute, is that an African queen? Was that pina colada? Was that African lemonade? Was that butterscotch? Was that buttercream? Or was that Snow Bunny? I'm not sure. My, my light-skinned sisters, I need y'all to confirm that y'all belong to the black race. My light-skinned sisters, I need y'all to confirm that y'all belong to the black race because I can't really tell. Sometimes, whether it's a butterscotch queen, lemon queen, buttercream queen, African vanilla queen, or cave bunny or cave bunny 
Diddy will be in jail until the spring, y'all. Diddy will be in jail until the spring. Uh, Dallas, Texas, I need tickets for the show tomorrow night. If it's bedtime, why are you on my live, my ninja? If it's bedtime, why are you on my live? You're supposed to be asleep. You're supposed to be cuddled up right now with a nice curvy queen. Why are you on my live? Why is you on my live, ninja? You should be warming up some Cinnabons right now. You talking about it's late? You ain't got no Cinnabons? Come on, my what up, Ray J? Ray J, you got a new show? I'm coming on Ray J's show. Shoot me a text, family. Me, Ray J, and Suki Han are going to do the first show together. Ray J, shoot me a text. I'm coming on your podcast, family. Shout out to Ray J. Shout out to my brother, Ray J. Me, Ray J, and Suki Han about to turn the whole shit out. Ray J, get Suki on there. We about to take over the podcast world one time. Ray J, Suki Hana, and the Prince of Pan-Africanism. They ready for that. They ready for that. Ain't y'all ready for that? Dr. Umar, Ray J, and Suki on, on Ray J new podcast. We're going to turn it out. We're going to turn it out. They ready. Let's do it, fam. Shoot me a text, Ray J. I got you. Shoot me a text. I'm going to hit you up. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Going once. Main event, 1977. Going twice. Main event, 1977. I got to see your face, beautiful. Give me a little light. Give me just a little light. There you go. What city you in, my queen? What city you in? I'm in Charlotte. You in Charlotte, North Carolina, the Queen City. I ain't spoke in Charlotte in about, damn, damn, six years. I'm overdue for a Charlotte return. Ooh. I'm overdue for a Charlotte return. What's going on in Charlotte, Queen? What, 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 what you like most about Charlotte and what you like least about Charlotte? I like the diversity in Charlotte. And okay, a African diversity, right? You ain't buddy hopping down there. All oh. right. <laughs> okay. You like the African diversity. And yeah. what do you like least about Charlotte? It's not the least that I don't like about Charlotte. Okay. It's great opportunity. You loving it. You loving it. That's what's up. That's what's up. Are you a single queen? Yes, I am. Now you're beautiful. You're a very beautiful sister. So why are you single? Why everybody always asks that? There has to be reasons. Um I'm single because just you know, you know, I was raising my kids by by myself, and um, just didn't have time for it. My I kids are you. older, co older now, so I'll get back out there. Get back out. I feel you. Why do we see so many beautiful single sisters? Break that down for us. Ooh, I don't know. Some Why there so many beautiful single sisters? You know, some brothers say the standards are too high. Some brothers say y'all can't be satisfied. Why do you think so many beautiful queens are single? I think because there's a lot of broken homes and a lot of guys are not a um, receive some strong women. I feel that's you. about it. And I a lot of it's it's different reasons. It's different reasons. I feel you. What's your take on the puff daddy thing, Queen? Where you stand on that? Hey, Body is innocent until proven guilty. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Innocent until proven guilty. Mm -hmm. What do you Guy What do you think about social media and black children? Do you think it's okay if you were in charge? Would you eliminate social media from the black child's diet? Oh yes, most wow. definitely. Because it, they're too influenced with everything. They're too influenced. They influence everything. The music, the television, everything. 
If I had to do it over, my children would not have watched half of the stuff or listened to half of the music. I feel you. I feel you. My last question for you, where you standing at right now with the Kamala Trump situation? Where you at on that? I plead the fifth. You gonna plead the fifth right now? I feel you. I plead I'll the fifth. fifth. You gonna plead the fifth. I feel you, gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Thanks for tapping in. Send me an inbox. So when I'm coming back to Charlotte, I'm sending you the flyer. So make sure I got a way I can reach. Okay. Nice meeting you. Likewise, baby. Enjoy your evening. You too. All right, mama. All right. That was a beautiful African queen. That was a beautiful African queen. Free Palestine. Free Palestine. Free Palestine. That was a beautiful sister my charlotte kings y'all need to get y'all act together my charlotte brothers y'all need to get y'all act together. that was a beautiful queen right there natural hair and everything if i can't grab it you can't have it if i can't grab it you can't have it natural hair and everything charlotte kings but i'm gonna tell the sisters like this oh me and ray j gonna knock it out the park the snow bunny boogeyman is coming on ray j podcast the Snow Bunny Boogeyman is coming on Ray J Podcast. The Snow Bunny Boogeyman is hopping on Ray J Podcast. We're going to turn it out. We're going to turn it out. Keisha Jones, 777. Keisha Jones, 777. <laughs> Keisha, I need to see your face, Keisha. Where you at, sweetheart? I got to see you. Let's see. Why? Wait, wait, is it? Where you at, Keisha? Oh, wait, 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 we're trying to turn the camera around. I don't want to see your speedometer, Keisha. I need to see you. One second. Wait, wait, where's the camera? Um, There's something wrong with it. We may have to log on. Oh, wait, maybe right here? Y'all stole somebody's phone? No! <laughs> Where y'all okay. at? Oh, there we are. Hi. Hi. Okay, there y'all go. How y'all going? How y'all doing, ladies? Where y'all at? What city? We're in New York. New York. Which, which borough? Which borough? We're in Long Island. Long Island. Strong Long Island. Island. My, my, how's the dating scene in New York with the brothers? They treating y'all well? What's going on? <clears throat> well, I'm not currently dating. Oh, you, you taking a break right now? Yes. All them brothers in New York, why are you taking a break? I really haven't uh, came across someone that um, sparked my interest. It okay. seems like the guys, uh, they are into playing a lot of games, and I don't really have time for that. I'm really, what? you know, looking for someone who, you know, is looking for a serious, committed relationship. What are the main two games that the brothers are playing? What's the main two games they running on the queens right now up in the you want to answer that one no no i'm gonna leave that up to you well um they have multiple women without informing um, okay so y'all being manipulated, manipulated into plural yes. marriage without your consent yes yes okay Unfortunately. i can understand they should be honest they should be honest um, and what's another, what, what, after that, what's the next biggest scam they running on the Queens? I don't know. What would you say, Mackenzie? Um, they lack accountability. Okay. Give me an yeah. example. What, what, what's, what's a major area where the brothers are lacking accountability? Um, I think that they, they aren't being accountable as far as like being honest about where they are in their lives, as far as like finances and things like that. So um i think that they're not honest and they they kind of try to manipulate black women into accepting less let me so, ask y'all a question because y'all in new york city the largest the most populated black city in america <laughs> i think women outnumber men in new york city three to one i think it is three or four to one so my question to y'all queens is if the brothers don't take on more than one mm. queen, mm. how will all the sisters in New York 
be accounted for romantically if we don't go to a plural marriage situation i don't i don't think a lot of them have enough resources to be able to um take on more than one and emotional intelligence so let me ask as well. you a question because i agree with you you said a lot of the brothers ain't got enough financial resources nor do they have enough psychological resources mm-hmm. but right. does, does that stop y'all from giving out your peach cobbler Oh, they're not getting the peach cobbler. <laughs> no, let's be honest, though. No, 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 I'm, I'm not, they're not. No, 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 no. Now, I don't mean, no, stay with me, stay with me, ladies. I don't mean just for the two of you. I want y'all to think more broad. Think okay. more broad. Y'all speaking for the sisterhood. Do you really think sisters are not mm. opening up the lotus flower <laughs> just because he ain't got the financial or psychological resources? Let's be honest now. Because babies are babies are still being made every day in New York, Absolutely. are they not? Yes. So talk to me about sister accountability for vulnerability. Well, I think more black women are actually being vocal about that, which is why you're hearing these narratives online about black women being like gold diggers or things like that, because they're raising their standards because mm-hmm. people are getting sick of the same results and the same type of treatment. So I do think that Black women as a whole are making efforts to change their outcomes. Let me me ask y'all a question. Let me flip this. Let's flip the narrative into a possibility, (laughs) right? Let's say all the brothers in New York had the economic resources and the psychological Psychological resources mm. and step the you on some straight up honesty and said, Listen, I want both for y'all, <laughs> and I can afford you, and I can show you I can afford you, and I can treat you right. Y'all don't have to live in the same house unless y'all want to. I got enough to hold y'all both down and all the children, and he proves it. He 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 lays it all out. Y'all say, Damn. He can really hold us down. Mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally? Yes. Would you consider it? You know what? It might be a possibility. Not so for then, me, but yeah. Why you say not for you? Um, Because I don't believe in sharing. Okay. Let's stay with that for one minute. <laughs> you don't believe in sharing, but is it realistic in a society where black women significantly outnumber black men Mm. who are not not institutionalized, okay? Now, y'all still outnumber us if all the brothers in prison were free. Y'all would still outnumber us. But y'all significantly outnumber us given the penal rate. (laughs) So is it realistic to not consider plural marriage when it ain't enough? heterosexual black males to go around. Mm. 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 And I know you ain't going to go bunny hopping on me. No, absolutely not. Definitely not. <laughs> that's disgusting. That's, no. just, that's a complete ancestral violation. Abs- I agree. <laughs> that is a complete ancestral <laughs> violation. Okay? Okay? Now, 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 where, where do y'all stand? Because y'all live in New York City. Where do y'all stand? What is the energy in New York City surrounding Puff? Because I ain't been in New York since Puff got arrested. Is it split down the middle? Some saying free Puff, others saying throw away the key. Is it like, what's the energy around the Puff Daddy situation in New York? What are you hearing in the streets? A lot of people say no diddy. A lot of people saying no diddy, lock him up and throw away the key. Like, I mean, I feel like I don't know. Like, what I mean, I don't really hear too much. Um, honestly, I mean, my circle, I mean, we're really not uh, discussing diddy, but um, how do you feel about it? He's, he's guilty until he's proven guilty, then you know, I, I really can't, uh, I you know, speak too much. Uh, Lay all the you know, cards on the it. table and let us, see. yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I'm yeah. with you. Oh, yeah. Where are you standing on the presidential election at this point? Where y'all at right now? 
Are y'all are y'all on the Democratic Party plantation or are you picking cotton on the Republican Party plantation? Where y'all at? I'm not picking either. <laughs> <laughs> I'll feel you. I'll feel you. Now, 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 I got another one for y'all. Black women in particular, more than black men, you hear black women calling themselves people of color instead of mm -hmm. black women, blending in with all the other minorities. Where do you two stand on that people of color versus I'm a black woman? Do you do you feel more comfortable calling yourself a woman of color? Or do you feel more comfortable? Why, why do we hear more black women calling themselves women of color instead of black women like we used to? Um, I think it's just like a verbiage that's just been like made popular. I, I don't prefer that. I don't think it like specifies our, you know, our particular demographic or needs. So I prefer being, you know, I, I prefer people saying black women or black people when they're mm -hmm. referring to us. Um, I think people just a lot of times use POC because it's safer. And mm -hmm. yeah, it just depends on the, the context. My last question have y'all donated to the frederick Douglass marcus garvey academy no, no. i have why not I, why the yet. hell not I you better will, get on I that cash app i don't care if you give me two quarters i okay. don't care if you give okay. me 10 nickels i don't care if you give me six dimes you better get on that cash app dollar sign okay. fdmg okay. school make sure it's not a fake one because they got like 30 fake ones up there okay you want fdmg okay. school and you got to look okay. close at the school because you know what the you know what the YouTubians did? What? They got a fake one that's F D M G S C H 0 letter O L. Oh, so you got to be careful. They got a okay. zero letter. So you got to make sure it's the S C H double O L. Okay. And then also too um I have a quick question. Can you say can you say one thing real Talk quick? Can you say what is it? Um Black. Queens forever. Black queens forever. No bunnies. No. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. I wait, appreciate it. Wait, one, one more thing. Talk, just had to let you know. Um, my friend is just, you know, she has such a crush on oh you. My God. Which um, one? Which one? Right here. Oh, right here. Here's sweet brown yeah. sugar. Sweet brown sugar. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Okay. Come to come to Wilmington, Delaware, sweet brown sugar. I'm treating you to lunch. In fact, both of y'all can come. I'm gonna treat both of y'all to lunch. I'd love to speak to you. I'm, I'm, like seriously. I'm, 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 hit me up on the inbox. Okay. There's or just no. Take my number. Take my number. Take my number. Okay. Because I get too many inboxes. You ready for the number? I'm gonna put y'all to work now. I'm gonna put y'all to work. Okay. Because you know it's consciousness over cookies. I'm gonna put you to work. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Two one five. What is it? Two one five. Two one five. Nine eight nine. Nine eight nine. Nine eight. Nine eight. Five eight. Five eight. Okay. But that butterscotch, that 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 warm butterscotch, <laughs> look nice next to that sweet brown sugar though. That's a nice little cold white right. team right there. <laughs> You know, they say teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah, listen, teamwork listen. Make, makes the dream work, my That's sister. Right. Ain't nothing like a butter almond, oh, sweet yeah. peanut butter, brown oh, sugar, God. soft walnut team. That's a nice wifey team. It's a nice wifey team. Hit me up, ladies. We're going to do lunch in Delaware. We will. All right. Take care. See, see her. Be blessed. All right, love. All right, bye -bye. <laughs> It's black. Black queens forever, snow bunnies never. Black queens forever, snow bunnies never. Black queens forever, snow bunnies never. Jack will ain't going once. Jack will ain't going twice. Thanks. Hey, Sister Jacqueline. Hi, Dr. Umar. My first question for you right off the top. Yeah. Because you have such a beautiful face, beautiful <laughs> lips, beautiful nose. <laughs> them eyes are mesmerizing. Why you ain't got your own hair on, Jacqueline, as beautiful as you are? Talk to your brother. It's just some braids. It's just the I have, braids. I have my natural in my profile picture and lots of pictures of oh, my hair okay. out. Okay. Okay. I want you to go natural because you're gorgeous. You don't need that. Mm. I want 
you King Kong wants you natural. Okay. So where, where you at, Jacqueline? I'm, what city? In California. What city? <laughs> near, near what no. big city? Oh, give me, you know, give, give me a big city that you're close to. Uh, uh, Oakland. Okay, you're in the Oakland. Okay, you're in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, how, how's everything going in the Bay Area? What's the toughest thing about being a black woman in California's Bay Area? Um, um I would say super multicultural here, like a really multicultural. So they're trying to multiculturalize us out of existence then. <laughs> I mean, I guess, but I think that because it's so multicultural, there's like a lack of emphasis on here because there's so many communities to cater to. So. Okay. Okay. And how, how's the dating scene out there? Are you in a relationship? Uh, single? Um, What's your status? Or are you in a situation ship where? I'm spoken for. Okay. Powerful. Mm -hmm. And since you're spoken for, we'll move on. Shout out to the king. Where <laughs> are you at on the Sean Puffy Combs uh, situation? I actually work in law. law so. Uh -huh. Are you an attorney or you just work in law, right? I work in law, but I'm studying to be. Powerful. That's good. That's good. What's your take? Well, I'm ex I wouldn't say wait excited. A I'm excited. Minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're not dating a. No, he's very much African. Okay. Thank you. Because somebody said they thought it was a bunny. Okay. No, go ahead. no, 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 no. But I'm, I'm interested interested to see how the trial goes and the precedence that it'll set mm -hmm. for future cases like in the music industry okay uh, i am of the personal opinion that i believe that he is guilty i, I don't believe i mean let me dial back just judging from and i used to live in atlanta i went to an hbcu okay. and one of the things that i had was i don't want to disclose it but it was very close to that camp and just from the things I heard and from the people I spoke to, um, there's a reputation of him already within our own community, even before all of the noise. And judging mm -hmm. by the complaint, um, Cassie's complaint, all of the different complaints that have gone out, while I do think that the volume of complaints that have gone in, there obviously there's going to be some people in there that are lying and trying to get a cash grab. I think there's substantial enough evidence to notice within our own community that he's a harm with he's a community. harm to the community yeah. let me ask you a question and you may very well be right so i can't dispute that i don't know sean combs personally but here's a question i have for mm -hmm. you let's say say sean combs is a harm to the community mm -hmm. what about all the thousands of roman catholic preachers who have molested black children in our neighborhood through the roman catholic uh through the roman catholic church Church. Why do you think we don't pursue them as aggressively as we pursue a Sean Combs? Um, let me break this down. Right? While I do agree that there are white people, like our white counterparts, definitely do fly underneath the radar. And within the Sean Combs case, there are intersections of racism within the structure of who we go after first. But I think that to whenever we're having the conversation about Sean Combs and we add white people and what they do, I think that it's a deflection on to the current conversation about Sean Combs. Even what, if we're talking about what white people did to black children, it's as, still a deflection. As, as a Christian, I don't agree with that. I, I don't believe that within any religious governing body that that should be going on, like whatsoever. I think that everybody who does harm to anybody should be held accountable to the highest extent. With that being said, because I completely agree with you, do you think that Black America is complicit in helping the white racist social order use Black men as scapegoats for a larger systemic problem that the government does not care to target? Oh, that's a loaded question. Um, complicit? I, I don't think that in in an overall sense, I don't think we have enough political, socioeconomic power to even be complicit. I even, think... Um, even though we watch more media than any other group in the country, you don't think we, we could be complicit by the not only the amount of media we consume, but how often 
uh, we attack and malign and, you know, uh, humiliate uh, Sean Combs, for example, in the public eye, uh, and we deflect from other cases like Donald Trump being found guilty of rape, but you have black people saying they're still going to vote for him. So if we care about sex assault of women and we care about Sean Combs, uh, beating up Cassie, which I completely agree was wrong, but how do we then turn a blind eye to Donald Trump being found guilty of rape in court, but yet you have black men and black women saying that they're still going to vote him in for president. At some point, don't we have to look at the selective morality, the conditional hypocrisy uh, in the black community? Because it seems like when it's a popular black person, we're all in and shaming them. We're all in and lynching them. We're all in and them being held accountable. But when white men do the same things to black women, when white men do the same thing to black children, we are not as aggressive in seeing to it that justice is served to them. Yeah. yeah. I... When you were talking about justice in the context of government justice, right? Yes, ma'am. Because I, I, I studied political science in college, and I believe that within the context of getting justice to the American government system, there's always going to be a racial component in there that okay. is using Black people as the end to getting that justice. So I do agree with you, Dr. Umar, that that is always going to be a fight. It's always going to Right, within, if you're focused on getting justice in the context of the American government, that's always going to be a thing. I think that I don't ever think that there was going to be a time where we're going to get away from watching Black people be the first in line. But I think that sometimes we get so focused on that, and walk with me here, that there's an overcorrection that's done, okay. which then defend the person that's up there, okay. that's the vote, because as we feel like we need to overcompensate for the lack of white people being held accountable. And I think that both of those issues need to be handled separately. While, while I think that we need to be, what I think we need to be doing is looking at the process in which the federal government, like I, I believe they're called like the biggest law firm in the entire world is the United States federal, um, uh, the federal, forgot their, their official name, but they're like the biggest law firm in the world. They have unlimited funds to go and do whatever they want mm -hmm. to the fact point where their of conviction rate is like over 97% whenever the feds get involved, mm -hmm. right? I think that if we really wanted equity within finding people accountable for what they do, we need to start there. Because I think that when we focus on, oh, Sean Diddy Combs is, is a, it's an attack on a black man, I think that that gives him an in to play on that to get away from what he's done and how he's harmed our community. Because, you know, I'm a black woman. I don't ever like to see black women being harmed, black women being being talked about. We we're also not we're also not taking into account of how the music he makes and the culture that he fed into wasn't Pot wasn't helpful for black women, wasn't helpful for dark skinned black women. So aside from the fact that he's a black man and that um But you're you're not saying that puffy should speaking purely on the music aspect you're not saying that puffy should be the scapegoat of 50 years of a hip-hop music genre that has pervaded oh. largely you know a uh, miscegenation through its music you wouldn't make puffy the scapegoat for that would you because a lot of bad boys music yeah. although probably not positive it wasn't as hardcore and raunchy as what we see in a lot of popular gangster rap. It was more crossover type music, if you will. No, I, so I don't. Yeah, I definitely agree. I don't think he was like the worst of the worst. But when I, when I'm when I'm talking about holding him accountable for that, I mean within our within an inter community context, okay. like a, maybe. He, He's the starter for that conversation, but there's a bigger conversation that needs to be had. And I think even just like the culture that they fed into, the drugs, the parties, the while he may not have been the 
component of this part of component of that music we have to look at how much of that music he was involved in all the music he was pushing how central he was in feeding the culture bringing all these people together because whether or not well we'll let the trial let me ask, I, ask you this let me ask you this mm -hmm. and very great commentary by the way what percentage mm -hmm. of the energy black people are given the puffy trial with regard to condemning him and wanting to throw away the key let's say black women what percentage would you say is directly attributable to self-hatred and the love of seeing black people fall from grace would you say that all the energy being directed from our community towards puff is purely based on a thirst for justice or do you see willie lynch at play somewhere in this and if so what percentage of the energy would you attribute to self-hate and black people's tendency to want to see each other fall from grace um it would be honestly it'd be ingenuine of me to give you a percentage because I, I i would need to see re, i would need more research okay. but what i i think that there's a bigger there there are some teeth to that there's some truth to black people wanting to see each other fail right and liking that but i also think that in a wider context of our culture um i think that there's a as an obsession with celebrity we could even see that like per that permeating through different parts of culture like example just in religion like the most popular pastors aren't the best pastors that the pastors that are the most popular you know um and we're so obsessed with sensationalism i think it's because i forgot what book i was reading um that basically talked about this but because so for so long black people has seen them like have self-actualized in america mm -hmm. as less than i think that when we see black people at a higher level than us we then attributed their identity to ours so their failures are our failures and their successes are our successes and we see like each other in, in tandem whereas like with white people you could see another white people do bad and you could be like oh that has nothing to do with me right but with with black people we attach so much of our identity to another black person so i think that the, the there's an aspect of self-hatred in there when we see another black person fail i think it's a little bit of projecting there and you want to hate on them a lot and you and you like the drama of it and it's really sensationalized to you so i think that it would do us a lot of it would do us a lot of a lot of good um if we stop sensationalizing regular human beings like in general and that's not just like black people that's just like the entire country in general because mm -hmm. it's harmful and, and and even when we saw like bringing it back to diddy even when we saw the conversation going on when he was with the young miami mm -hmm. and they were very harmful rhetoric was coming out of that relationship like oh get a bag oh it doesn't matter what our relationship status is like you know you're you you're a proponent for black marriage but diddy's out here having babies with multiple women and sleeping with a younger woman and basically um parading around the fact that they are they don't really care about marriage and it's about the bag and it's fun and it's this and all of that is happening and we're idolizing that like we're 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 saying that we love it and it's 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 a lot of young women's goal to have to have um, um to be in that position yeah. Got you. My last question for you, good sister. Uh, statue of limitations yes. on sex, sexual harassment, and sex crimes accusations. Mm -hmm. And mind you, my background is psychology. So I know how often Black women are raped. I know how often you guys are sexually harassed. Um, Black women suffer sex assault more than any other women in America, and your victims are less likely to pay for it. So I understand the seriousness. But as a woman and as someone who studies law, what is your opinion on women, black and white, mm -hmm. being able to come out of the woodworks 
20 years later and say, this happened to me. Now, I understand you can't put a timeline on trauma. You can't put a timeline on shame. You can't put a timeline on fear. You can't put a timeline on vulnerability. I get it. But do you think something needs to be done about this situation where it appears that women are taking advantage of the law and taking advantage of successful men to some degree by coming out 15, 20 years later and say, he did this to me. And in many cases, there's almost no evidence because it happened so long ago. There's almost no evidence that could prove the person was guilty. So even if they don't lose in court, they still lose in the court of public opinion. As a woman, if you had to vote on this, if you had to make a decision, would you put a limit? Would you say it should always remain unlimited that a woman could come out 30 years later, 40 years later, or would you put a limit somewhere? And if so, what kind of a limit do you think you would probably consider? Um, Statue of limitations. Obviously, within context of the law, it's it's very it's 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 very important that you take your time with laws because while you may want to intend the law to help somebody, there can be that can set pressure precedence there always is there's always a possibility for precedence to be set for that law to be manipulated by people right so i think that i wouldn't go into making a law focused on who can manipulate it because as we've seen in sexual abuse cases um and rape cases and allegations there's really like when you look at it in the long term there's really little to no consequences for the men that get called out like they rarely ever have any long-term consequences for it well most um, of the time I'm sorry to cut you off. What we're seeing as far as celebrity men mm -hmm. is a uh, civil suit. So you're right. Yeah. You know, the statute of limitations for the criminal mm -hmm. has already exhausted itself. So now they're purely going for the bag. They're purely going for the money. So let, let's reduce it to that. Let's reduce it to a, a situations where the statute of limitations to bring a criminal suit have uh, collapsed. The, uh, the time has ran out. They've exhausted the statute of limitations to bring criminal suit. So they're purely looking at civil, which means they're purely looking at money. In situations where women did not file within the appropriate timeline for a criminal suit, they let that go by where this person could have been convicted and went to jail. They let that go by. So now they're dealing with civil and they're purely going after the money do you think there should be some limits there? And if so, how long would you allow after the window to bring a criminal case has expired? How much time would you give a woman to bring civil suit for financial damages? I honestly, one of my honest answer, yes. I would... I would make it in like somewhere or I would, I would do at least 15 years. And let me tell you why. Okay. The psych, and as you know, you study psychology, psychologist says that the psychology, the psychology of an abuse victim is like your brain blocks out the trauma. You don't even remember a lot of it. It takes a long mm -hmm. time to get back into your body to remember what happened. Mm -hmm. And not only that, the ramifications of trying to heal you out of work can ruin a lot of things in your life that could that could prevent you from financially providing for yourself and paying okay. for your and what what I, I think what i would focus more on looking at is not only the the discovery process of evidence like what evidence is going to look like i would um also accompany that law with societal changes like within hospitals okay. like work with make rape kits more available like and also it's really difficult because like the culture of society makes women not want to come forward because when you go to the police station you've got to 
tell the story over and over again to like three different police officers and an investigator and this person before it gets done it's, it's really traumatic so i would i'm sorry i would i would account for all of that and i would i would do at least 15. so let me ask I, you this understanding the 15. um here here's my question for you as a woman because i'm a man so i can't even begin to understand that type of pressure that type of pain that type of shame mm -hmm. help me understand this you have had about hypothetically you had 10 years mm -hmm. to bring this to criminal court where your aggressor could have been locked behind bars mm -hmm. you still have to go through the rape kit you still have to go through the multiple interviews mm -hmm. you still have to go through the scrutiny you let that go mm -hmm. for him to really be held accountable for what he did you let that go and then you wait until it goes into the time period for civil case mm -hmm. you still got to do the rape kit you still got to do the investigation you still got to face the scrutiny in other words you go through the exact same process albeit you're doing it later so i do understand what you're saying she needed time to process and prepare herself mm -hmm. i do understand that but if you're going through the same thing all over again, how is getting money for sex assault going to make you feel better than the perpetrator being locked behind bars? Will money make you feel justice was served more than the perpetrator actually being locked up in jail? I, Help me understand how money can be a better price to pay than prison time. Well, let me tell you this. Money was the same reason why he felt empowered to do that to her. So I can't think of anything more empowering to take that back. So you would feel, so I'm still free. I'm not going to jail. Mm -hmm. I'm a billionaire. I'm a multimillionaire. Mm -hmm. I give you 20, 30, 40 million dollars. Mm -hmm. I'm still living my best life because I can afford it. And you feel that that is a better example of justice being served than this man actually going to jail and being put behind bars. Well, the, well, the legal system doesn't, she can't, of course she'd probably love to see him in jail, but that's, that's not. But she, she could have. I, and let me cook Dr. Umar. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. One, she is, because she was brave enough to tell her story, which led to other people telling their story, which led to now the feds getting involved. So I would say Cassie got the money and she got to see the man in jail. So to me, Cassie won, right? But but, but remember, his, his his fed indictment has nothing to do with the Cassie. I know domestic. he's still in jail. And she was definitely a proponent, a proponent. And the feds wanted to take a look at it, especially with that videotape. Of, of him coming out, right? So that for one, and um, for two, and in, in terms of like, um, would money, of course it would never do that. Would, when, if your child gets murdered and you go to jail and somebody getting 15 years because of their own trauma that they went through in their life that caused them to be a murderer, would that give you justice? No, it wouldn't. But I think the the release of being able to tell your story, also too with, with the fact of how, how major he was and so many people who are around them and who are witnessing what's going on mm -hmm. and for having to feel so powerless for so long, for them, for the, for the money from her, from her money, be, from her music not being had, from him stringing her along and using his power to be like, I'm gonna get you a career, I'm gonna get you everything you wanted. All the years of having to be in rehab for all the drug abuse that he's put her on, I think that money would that money would do her very well. And I think I think that the money is, is helpful, but I think it's symbolic of power because that same, like I said earlier, that same money that she's getting was the same money that he held over her head. So she could be the little fine thing on his arm um, to the whole music industry. So I, I would say that there's no, there's n underneath the constraints of the United States justice system, there's no way that there's possibility for a victim to get 100% justice because your sexual integrity is gone, the person that was killed is gone. There's, they, you can't, we can't bring that back. But I think that the reward is symbolic of something bigger, personally. So I would okay. say, Cap 
Gotcha. Last question for you, beautiful. And you yourself may not know men who are guilty of domestic abuse, mm -hmm. but most women do because black women are significantly victimized by domestic abuse mm -hmm. by black men. Teenagers, regular age women, elderly women are abused. Help me understand if it isn't hypocrisy, not for you, but speaking for the sisterhood, black women in general, if it isn't hypocrisy, how do we explain all these black women who want to see puffy fried, but you have men you know in your personal life who beat their women, have beat their women, and you've never done nothing about it. Your father, your brothers, your uncles, your nephews, your friends, your college homies, all of these black men who have put hands on women that black women are aware of, never said or did anything about it, but yet they want Puffy to get fried. Is that hip? hypocrisy is that a double standard and if it isn't how is it not two points one absolutely is a double standard i think that within their own their own environment they probably feel powerless so puffy is definitely used as an outlet for them to express the anger that they probably feel powerless to express in their own environment so i do see you that you think that's fair that's, I was about to, that's okay what, that was my second okay point. okay my second point was that I don't think that's fair, and I think that the reason I think that women we need to do a better job at standing next to each other and creating safe spaces for each other to to tell each other these things. So we can, if we start holding the men around us accountable, mm -hmm. it'll be a year for us to hold men accountable like in general within our community. And I just also want to land on this. And it's something I probably have to do better with as well. Like okay. I, in the constraints of me and I feel is we all have things in our closet. We all have skeletons that if they came out like the deepest, darkest, worst things of, of, that we came out are bad, right? And one thing about it, and I'm standing 10 toes down on black women, Diddy should be held accountable. But I think that at the end of the day, I really do hope that he takes this as an opportunity to reflect to, and to really sit down, look at himself in the mirror and want to do right by his victims and turn and and do better for himself and create a new life for himself as, as much as he can mm -hmm. with the circumstances. So while I do think there's a level of accountability that we need to have for Diddy, but I think we need to look at ourselves more mm -hmm. and also extend a level of grace and i know people it's you're hearing it with her ears i'm hearing it where i heard it with her ears too but we can't at the same time say that fry him and everything and then be on the streets and 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 advocate and and hold space for the menendez brothers and hold space for people in our community who have done wrong with drug convictions in the 80s and the 90s at that time black people were saying fry them now and now 15 years later we're looking back at them with more with more empathy so hold them accountable but also hold grace and pray for him to change gotcha. but gotcha. well said queen i'm proud of you one of the greatest conversations i had with the young sister keep up the good work and next time i see you you better be natural <laughs> black queens forever <laughs> snow bunnies <laughs> never my sister great job great job all right babe take care Jacqueline did good, y'all, didn't she? That young sister held her own. That was beautiful. That was a very, very intelligent conversation. Who tapping in next? Who tapping in next? This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism coming to you live from Dallas, Texas. Live from Dallas. I need some tickets. Tyrese, I need them tickets, big homie. Tyrese, I need them tickets, big homie. Snatched mine going once. Snatched mine going twice. Hey, Dr. Hey, beautiful. That's a beautiful smile. Where you at, Queen? Actually, 
You know what's funny is I, I actually just moved to Dallas oh, not you just, too long ago. You just moved like, to Dallas? Yeah, like last week. From where? Yeah. From Virginia, Northern Virginia. Okay. Okay. What part of VA? Um, Manassas. Okay, because we was at the Nat Turner land in uh, Southern VA yeah. uh, a couple of days ago, October 2nd. So what, what, what's your take, uh, if you was following that conversation there, you know, I asked the sister, what, what's the whole thing about Black women are so adamant about Puffy being held accountable. And I can understand that. If he's done wrong, you should be held accountable. But there's other Black men that Black women see every day who they know have physically abused Black women and they don't do anything about it. So I'm trying to understand that double standard. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think that it's, it's complicated. I think that when you're when you understand history and how that works, and the way that the black man is seen in America, it makes the topic of discussion a very complex one. And it's one that we could easily go down the rabbit hole. I also think that, um, you know, the agenda is clearly to have, show the rise of the black man and also to show his downfall. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said it very well when he said that the only way that the black man can really protect himself is to protect his integrity on his way up. Because when it does fall down, they'll find anything, you know, they'll find anything. And I think as sisters, um, you know, we, we've always been supportive of our brothers, always. Um, and this, you sure this about shows, that? I think that throughout history, well, it has shown that we've always been supportive I, of I agree. Our I brothers. agree with that. But um, let's stay in the 21st century. In, in the, the 21st century. 21st century, would you say black women have largely been supportive of black men these past 24 years? Would you say that? I'm going to speak for myself and say yes. Okay. okay. Um, I'm not now, I don't know if you you know how you and I originally met. Um wow. we actually met in person. Where? And you told <laughs> in Shanghai, China. You was in China? Mm -hmm. We met in Shanghai. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. You wasn't the hostess though, right? I wasn't the hostess, okay, but you and okay. I had a conversation afterwards. And you were telling me I looked like some girl from Chirac. I don't know. Okay. 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 I think it's starting to come back. It was to... a long time ago. Like when I say a long time ago, it was yeah, a long I time ago. Yeah, because I did China and Japan twice. Mm -hmm. I did them in 2018. I yeah, did. it was 2018. And I think yep. 2019. Mm -hmm. we, okay. we met in, then we met in 2018. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. We ain't, go to yes. we, we ain't go to dinner or nothing, though, right? <laughs> Look, listen, if, if, if you don't, if, if we went to dinner and you don't God, remember me, then you know what I mean? No, we definitely didn't go I'm to joking. dinner. I'm joking. I'm joking about I'm joking about So, okay. So picking up where you were on mm -hmm. the... You okay? Speaking for yourself, you said you are largely supportive of black men. Absolutely. Do you think that's true for your sisters? Like generally, black women generally. Do you say 50, 50, 50 in terms of supporting black men? Seventy five, twenty five. Where would you put the meter at for black women in general? Support for black men. See. This this kind of conversation is interesting because it's all about your association to the different circles that you're in. So a lot of my friends are married to black men and, you know, there's the network, right? If 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 you're around a certain environment that then that's what you see. Right. So the sisters that I'm around are all super duper supportive of black men. We're all super duper supportive of their careers. We're all super duper supportive of everything. And those black men in turn are also super duper supportive oh. of us. So I would say that I'm around a healthy environment of our people. Okay. So in terms of the toxic stuff that I see on the internet, I only ever see that on the internet and on the media, gotcha. if I choose to get on. Gotcha. You know what I mean? But otherwise in real life, in real time, you know, it's, I, I see nothing but, you know, uh, you know, supporting that. And, you know, I, even, even myself, you know, like I, I support a black man. I work for a black man. So, okay. you know, that, that's, that's important. I was like, if I'm gonna have a boss, it's gonna be a black man. Powerful, powerful, you know? powerful. 
What is your, well, let me ask you this. I've heard black, black women say, and I've heard elders say this, queen mothers, that the black men of today,